Today I want to talk about the idea of why hardcore survival and falling in love, they have the same skill set. I'm going to tell you why, but first we're going to spend a little time on our morning routine here on the cow farm. So we're going to take a deep breath and we're going to see you on the other side. Well this is the part of the video where I actually talk and I'm trying to figure out how to eliminate this part and actually still create a short message. But until I figure that out, uh, today, as I said in the beginning, I want to ask you, uh, or I want to offer up this idea about why hardcore survival and falling in love, or real love, is the same set of skills. And what those are is three things, if we're going to boil it down to hardcore survival. It's uh, going all in. It's doing whatever it takes, and it's never giving up. And I think if any of you have ever been in a situation where you've had to do that, you've had to commit, you've had to go all in, even in the face of not necessarily uh, succeeding, if you get to the other side, it's really powerful. But you'll also be able to know that uh, just because you did it, it doesn't mean it felt good, it doesn't mean you got the outcome you wanted, uh, and it doesn't mean that you got your way. And I see, you know, one of the problems with uh, where we are in our culture with love is that we've romanticized it. We pretty much put it in a romantic uh, category. But in addition, we don't uh, really work very hard for it. It's just too easy to find somebody else. It's too easy to cheat. It's too easy to give up. Uh, it's too easy to get divorced. And it's too easy to just hide out. I should know. I'm really good <laughs> at that last part. And uh, what prompted a lot of this is, you know, looking at my own self in terms of, uh, you know, my pattern of behavior, which is often quit, run, hide. And I've been having that with YouTube. I want to quit, I want to run away, and I want to hide. And so I'm trying to force myself to stick with this process until I can find a way to survive it and still feel good, to still feel love. And so one of the things I stumbled across uh, recently, which really was prompted the, that uh, absence of videos, and I'm going to link it below, it's uh, something called Terror Management Theory, and the, it's, there's an original book idea, I think it's Ernest Becker, who came out with the idea, and then Sheldon Solomon is a professor of psychology who spent the last 30 years doing research to examine that as an idea. And he doesn't talk about survival or love. He talks about uh, this underlying premise that we have a deep anxiety around death. So you'll see it in the literature called death anxiety. And the way that he uh, studies it is he does something called death reminders. And that's a subliminal flashing, a way to initiate... Uh, into the subconscious so you're not aware that you've had a death reminder and then uh, measuring your behavior before and after so with and without that death reminder and what was so powerful to me about that was uh, it wasn't the psychology or the philosophy of terror management theory or death anxiety which is what you'll find you know by Jordan Peterson and other people talking about it as a psychological or philosophical process. I was most interested in the fact that uh, it didn't matter who you were, you still had a uh, change in behavior if you experienced a death reminder. And so, uh, you know, in looking at what we follow on YouTube, it's almost all about death, right? It's shock, it's blood, it's fear, it's fear porn, it's survival because you don't want to die, it's collapse, it's the end of the world, and you know the reality is is if you don't make it about that, you know 75 percent of us are wired for negativity. We like negativity, it's a stimulant, it makes us feel better. Uh, we like negativity we can't control because it makes us feel more powerful because we don't have to take responsibility. But but And I've long been aware, you know, that we are in a culture of death. I couldn't find the statistics. I've seen them in the past that by 18, you know, this was a long time ago, children have been witness to, you know, like 10,000 or 15,000 murders, you know, online. That 
with the internet and with video games and with uh, our media, there's a non-stop onslaught of death. We live in a culture of death and uh, we are creating suicide by civilization. So this is all extremely real. And for me, I the only part I want to be a part of is what do we need to do to motivate ourselves to focus on life itself. And so that to me is a switch where I want to talk about uh, life and love, which isn't something that gets queued up in short videos like these. And because we're not motivated to focus on what we want, most of us are motivated on what we don't want. You know, the problem with addiction, which is what all this fear and death is, we are addicted to the stimulation we get from death. We, we're addicted to the chemical reaction in our body uh, by the stimulation of death. The problem with addiction is that you spend more time avoiding what you don't want to feel than you are towards what you want. So, uh, you know, there's this idea that, oh, I want pleasure, so I'm going to use something and I'm, I'm addicted to. But the pleasure wears off very quickly. The real power of addiction is avoiding what you don't want, which is the grand irony, right? We're addicted to talking about death, about experiencing the fear of death. But the irony is, is that's exactly what we don't want. So we spend all this time and energy trying to prepare ourselves to not die. And it's exactly what's killing us. So, uh, so I'm trying to make that decision and make that switch where I operate from a place of integrity and I don't talk about death as a way to stimulate views or to f make you afraid. And, uh, and, the, and I've seen that on my little tiny channel. If I put something that's a personal tragedy like betrayed or terminal diagnosis or uh, some other kind of urgent crisis in the title, then I get way more views than if I put something like I did one time, you know, love has been hijacked, which it has been. So, so what do I want to say? So the first thing I would do is I would really suggest you listen to the, to the uh, lecture below. It's a long one, but it's really powerful and he's funny, so it makes it bearable. Uh, the second thing is, is I just wanted to go over a couple of the things that he talks about. And uh, he does all the citations on his uh, curriculum vitae, if you look him up in terms of, I think he goes to Skidmore, he's a professor at Skidmore College, uh, Sheldon, you can find that through the link below. And if you're conservative and you see a death reminder, if you can't get an economic solution, you shut down and you don't want to deal with it. Meaning, if you're conservative and you can't buy your way out of the problem, you don't want to know about it. If you're an atheist and you get a death reminder, uh, you become more vicious and defensive. Uh, if you're religious and you get a death reminder, you become more prejudiced, racist, and defensive and vicious, violent uh, in your responses. If you are uh, convinced that you are not influenced by a death reminder, you actually have a stronger reaction than almost anybody. So our belief that we are immune to this idea actually is uh, more predictive of being more vicious and more divided and more defensive. Uh, if you are uh, religious in a non-fundamental way, uh, you still have, you gravitate more towards your religious uh, community as boundaries to feel safe. Uh, but the bottom line is, and the, the, the one of the ones that was most uh, there was a couple that were really profound. One was when judges uh, were shown death reminders prior to sentencing. Their sentences were nine times more harsh than when they didn't get that death reminder prior to sentencing. When, uh, they, when they were trying to see if death reminders would influence an outcome, it was when George Bush and John Kerry were running. Uh, initially, without the death reminder, there was a uh, four to one vote for Kerry. With the death reminder, there was a three to one vote for Bush. So, you know, as I was listening to this again and again and again, I was thinking how powerful uh, we are being manipulated, how easily we're being manipulated. And the more 
we believe we're not being manipulated, the more manipulated we are, and how difficult that is to convince people that that's happening. And the only people who were not manipulated, uh, whose thinking wasn't manipulated, or emotional response wasn't manipulated, were Buddhist monks. And I have my own theories about that, and I will probably talk about that more on the, the website for members, because it's a pretty detailed explanation. But uh, I just thought that was quite profound. So when I talk about this idea of falling in love and hardcore survival, uh, if I talk about survival with you, uh, the conservatives don't want to listen because I'm not selling you anything that's a product. I'm asking you to take action and responsibility for your life. Uh, if you're an atheist and I talk about hardcore survival or the end of the world, uh, I'm just making you more defensive and you want to get away from me because, again, I'm asking you to take responsibility uh, and take action. If you are uh, religious and I talk about hardcore survival, uh, it just makes you deep, dig deeper into your belief system of a fundamental nature, and I'm not a fundamentalist across any religion or ideology. So pretty much anybody who watches this video and I talk about hardcore survival uh, I'm going to turn you off to what I'm trying to offer to you because what I'm trying to offer to you <laughs> is internal strength so that you have uh, so much strength you don't have to be defensive and angry and you don't have to dig into an ideology. You know, I'm trying to talk about how to be so powerful within your own uh, ability as being agile that you don't have to be prejudiced or racist. I'm asking you to not buy anything. I'm asking you to do the actual work, uh, which takes time and energy, which, you know, people who are conservative or people who are uh, resistant to taking responsibility have zero interest because it requires personal effort not actual, uh, something you can go buy and displace that responsibility on someone or something else. So, uh, so that's why I'm kind of switching this conversation to falling in love with being human because the deep need is to connect, is to reconnect uh, with others, with God, with nature, with, uh, with ourselves. And the only way we can really do that is that we can't buy something, we can't uh, just take an idea and not change. It, it requires a lot of personal discipline and a personal commitment to want to create that change. And uh, again, that's less than 1% of the population. So I am not preaching to the choir, but it's only the choir that's actually going to hear what I'm saying. And so I want to encourage you, if you are somebody that understands this, uh, you know, the next step, which has also been my step, is uh, there's no day where you stop doing the daily work. There's no day where you stop strengthening your foundation. Uh, and I really have taken that from what I referenced the other day with, you know, like the monks uh, the, 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 or yogis who practice. You never stop doing the foundational stuff. You may advance in terms of your skills, but the day you stop working on that foundation everything falls apart. And that takes humility, and that takes willingness, and that takes discipline, which is what I referred to the other day. So uh, that's really what we're doing here. But, you know, fall, to be really, to truly love is the same thing that Hardcore Survival asks us. It's to go all in, it's to never give up, uh, and it's to do whatever it takes. And that's my commitment to this process, is to do whatever it takes to figure out how to motivate and inspire you to take the action of the ideas and to not just click and watch another video. So <laughs> with that, we're going to take a deep breath. You can find more over at 18 Crossroad where we're building a community of people who are committed to doing the work, to staying human, because I believe the solution to every problem begins with a strong foundation in our core humanity. So the problem is less important than the solution, and if you're interested in that, you can find more there. So, so with that, we will see you next time.